Do you see a picture here? Well, I assume you imagine this, which seems natural, but the idea that you can connect equations with geometry was not obvious to humanity for centuries until Descartes established this connection via his famous coordinate system. We will demonstrate the sheer mightiness of geometric thinking in this video. The system looks complicated if we attempt any algebraic manipulations. And the trick here is to observe. These numbers look suspicious because they belong to a Pythagorean triangle. Oh, so it should be about triangles. Does this expression make you think of any triangular things? Well, a recent high school student will recognize cosine theorem, which I like to refer to as generalized Pythagoras theorem. The triangle it describes has sides x, z, and 5, and we can find the angle by taking inverse cosine of minus a half, which is 120 degrees. The same thinking applies to the two other equations, giving us three triangles in total. All of them have a 120 degree angle inside, so if we put them next to each other, they produce a perfect circle. And our triangles arrange into one big triangle, which we will immediately recognize as right-angled. This point has a special name of Fermat point, which is also known as Torricelli point, or first isogonic point, or x13 because it is 13 out of 50,000 possible centers in a triangle. Anyway, this point is remarkable because it has least combined distance to all three sides amongst all internal points. Isn't this beautiful? Using sine theorem, we add areas of the three triangles and the total area is simply 6. Rearranging, we get the answer. But we are committing a little inaccuracy here. When converting this problem to geometry, we assume that all variables are positive. If all of them are negative, the equations will not change, so the answer will be the same. If only one variable is negative, introduce a new variable t to make them all positive again. In this case, the equations will change. Now they describe a different picture, which still involves cosine theorem. To use the area of this triangle, we now have to subtract one of the smaller triangles, but it's fine because it is exactly what we want to find according to our variable change. The answer is the negative of our first result. Notice that two out of three variables being negative is symmetric. Change sign of all three and we are back at case two. And here is something to ponder about. What goes wrong if we assume that either one of x or z are negative? Leave your suggestions in the comments.